Bukka on the left, Cornelius Warmerdam on the right. You should see some similarities with extension. Of course, uh, Yosemite Sam is a very experienced pole vaulter. But you ever get, a, get to the point where you feel like you're not improving? You feel like you're just not making any headway? Well, I'm going to talk to you about some things that you can do to get you to improve in PR. The point that I want to make is, if you don't pay attention to the little things, you're going to hit a wall in your improvement. You're going to stop improving. Now our models, this is Yelena Isabaeva, Olympic champion, training here in Italy with Vitaly Petrov. Active pole drop, upright position, push the pole, swing to the top of the pole, that's 16 feet. She just, she just won five heroes from Italy. That was a bet. Another model, one of my personal heroes, Cornelius Warmerdam, on a, on a bamboo pole, swinging over, over 15 feet, landing in sawdust. And then Sergei Buka. And when I talked to Vitaly Petrov about how he developed his philosophies, he said one name, Cornelius Warmerdam. So we got to look back at history and look at the straight pole to be able to help us learn to rotate this pole to vertical, rotate the bending pole, make pole speed accelerate. And I'm going to talk about some things that you do wrong to stop that rotation and to cause the pole speed to decelerate. That's pretty, isn't it? So here's my daughter on a swing set, and she's rocking back and swinging along to accelerate that chain, going higher and higher. But watch what happens when she pulls on the chain. Right about here, chain stops its rotation, and the swing stops. Does that wake anybody up? High bar, giants on a high bar. Rachel Greff, a junior at Rice University, PR 13.6. Swinging to the top, she kind of throws her head back a little bit, loses extension, but you hit an elastic position down at the bottom, tap swing to the top, stay extended, and you go right to the top. Look like the pole vault. Here's Yelena Isambayeva doing the same thing, working her way up to a giant swing. She keeps her head in a better position, opening her shoulders up, saying totally extended, Elastic at the bottom part of the swing and then accelerate the swing the vertical, but you don't pull. So watch this giant go around. Nice and extended. Right to the top. Same thing. But now let's look at the wrong way. Here's Rachel. She's going to pull just at the top of her rotation. Everything stops. So just at the point where vaulters seem to react to the plan or try to pull forward, Look what happens to her swing. I wonder what happens to a pole vaulting pole if you do that. Ryan Harlan, NC2A champion, national champion, decathlon, PR when I met him was 10 feet. He's been 17 feet. Swing to the top, you push the rope up with both hands and you swing right to the top of the rope and the rope keeps rotating. But if you pull, you see your head pop out, your body breaks into a tuck. In fact, he even tried, he could have done it worse. But that's how the body reacts. The body breaks, equal and opposite reaction. Dr. Fred Hansen, 1964 Olympic gold medalist, doing the same drill, swinging to the top on a swinging rope at Rice University. This is 1963. This is the A-frame where you tape a couple of poles together like a TP, take off, go elastic, and if you stay long and elastic and drive through your shoulders, through your hands, the A-frame will rotate, but if you pull, your body breaks into a tuck or a pike, and those uh, an A-frame will stop. A good example here is he just goes elastic and stays extended, but watch what happens when he pulls. Everything stops. So you've got to make sure that you're not reacting to the box or reacting negatively to the plant. So we're going to talk about the plant. Watch what happens when he pulls. Shoulders stop, body breaks, no rotation of the poles. The Netherlands, Belgium, Holland, they have a competition where they jump for distance over a canal. This guy pulled right away off the ground, so what happened to the rotation of the pole? Someone say it stopped! 
and then they crash bam, it goes down. This guy gets more extension off the takeoff, jumps higher, gets the pole accelerating initially. Now he can climb that baby all the way to the top. And then as the pole falls, he can pull through and land in sand. And it's a sport that they still do today. Now, let's talk about what we're looking for. Make as much space between your head and the pole. That's called make space push pull. We're pushing the pole all the way up towards vertical before we hit the back of the box. And then at that point, you go elastic. Now, the way to get there is to get, have a nice straight line, what I call a straight line plan, which means that the pathway of your hands is in a straight line, not a curved line, not a zigzag line, not an out and up line. And to be able to do this type of plant, you got to have your wrist cocked, your elbow slightly in, and the tip moving with your back hand, not dropping the pole with your front hand. So here's another example of it. Just pushing the pole straight through the body in a straight line, shortest, quickest point between two points, shortest, quickest distance. Now here's an example, is if you're running, that's the pathway of your left arm. So if you look at the pole, she's going to catch it right there. That's exactly where the hand should go as if it's an extension of the running motion of your arms. Same way with the backhand. Backhand, you're swinging the backhand all the way back. You just catch the pole there in a straight line. That's what you need to do with the plan. Push the pole the vertical. Now, what really messes up with the timing of the plant is if you carry the pole incorrectly. So from the get-go, you've got to have your elbow slightly tucked and your wrist cocked. You cannot have the elbow open and a straight wrist and, and, and expect to control the weight of the pole. Remember, the pole is a weight. And when that pole tip is coming down, you've got to control the weight. And if you lose control of the weight, you're going to decelerate. If the pole, trip, drop, pole drop goes too early, you're going to decelerate. If it goes too late, you're going to decelerate in your run. Now here she's trying to keep the hip free of the pole. Some coaches show that you keep the hip connected and hold it at the hip, but you've got to be free as that pole tip comes down off of six steps. This is an example of where the tip should be coming off six steps out from takeoff, maybe a little bit lower so that she can run in there and have an eye level when she starts her plant three steps out. So here she's showing where the tip should be when she starts to plant. She likes it a little bit too high, but she is alien. But it needs to be moving through your face as you start to flip it over with the right hand on your left support. Now. Here's some examples of some bad plants. If you drop your left hand with the pole and lose control and push it out and up, you're going to decelerate and you're not going to get a great plant. Also, if you take it around your body, you're going to have a curved line to vertical, which takes more time to get the plant to vertical. And usually, you're going to run into the box. And if you run into the box too soon, you're not going to get full extension. Another incorrect way to plant, I call a backhand or the big twist backhand where you turn your body, turn your shoulders and, and flip it up way back behind your head. By the time you get it to vertical, you've already hit the box. Here's some examples when you're bending the pole, some things that can happen. Fiber nose is when you plant, stop the, the pole extension right by your face. Collapse, fiber nose, then you're pulling on the pole which stops your hips. Remember what happens to that rotation. The pole rotation will stop if you pull. Here's an example of pushing the pole out then into fiber head, which is above the head, but then he drives his arms down and the pole stops its rotation. Body stops its rotation. Example of block and break, that's when you lock your left arm out. You can do that and bend the pole, but then you have to collapse your arm to get upside down. Not the most efficient way of pole vaulting or moving the pole to vertical. Here's an example of what I call canoe rowing. He's going to plant and drive his arms down hard. What happens to his hips and pole speed? Everything decelerates. He can't get upside down. Now, how do we cure these problems? Well, 
One of the crucial drills that we do is called the three-step three slow motion. This is Yelena Isambayeva. She lets the pole tip move. She's going to hit left support, flip the pole up through her face, push the pole all the way to, through extension, through her penultimate, and then take off. Full, make space, a lot of space above the head, full extension. And then what we do is we do a lot of sand vaulting, but what we do is try to get the vaulter to release the pressure with the left hand and to stay totally open and elastic, and it's almost like belly bumping. You're pushing the pole to vertical without pulling. If the vaulter does it wrong, their body will cross the pole and collapse next to it. The body will break. So we do some walkovers, we do some one-step jump overs, a good rule of thumb, if you see your fist above your head, you're doing it pretty good. And then gradually as you hold higher, the vaulter will get more extension with that left fist. This is an elevated one step into the sand, open the shoulders, not pulling down the tip, okay? Just staying nice and open and elastic. And then we try to continue swinging and jumping for distance. You know, as Doug Fraley mentioned a minute ago, if you don't straight pull, then you are not teaching it correctly, quite honestly. You want a kid to improve, you got to do steel vaulting at least once a week. So here's a, a two-step takeoff, and again, release the pressure with the left, get the fist above the head, drive your whole body and chase the pole. Another drill we do, the pit bump, release the pressure with the left, drive the body through the pole, and not pull. If she was to pull right there, her body would break, and the pole rotation would stop. If you don't believe me, try this stuff. The kid will improve leaps and bounds. Then we move it over to the pit, do some pit jumps. Again, push the pole, go elastic, stay long, and push the pole to vertical. Get it to rotate. Then we go up a little higher on the pit, up at the corner of the pit so you're traveling a little bit more airborne. And then I have the kids learn to relax and trust themselves that they can push the pole like this before we step on the runway. Another one I call the belly bump. I just simply spot the athlete, put my foot up against the pole. Again, have them open their hands and arms and shoulders up and drive their body through their hands. I just push against their belly to get them to react to the pole. She'd try to pull there, the pole wouldn't move. And it makes it really difficult for me to spot her. And then we go to a two-step. Pole, arms should be moving, push the pole up, release the pressure, drive through the pole. In fact, I almost never do, I know a lot of people do one arms, I've gotten away from doing one arms. As anybody can one arm, it's having to carry the pole and get the tip moving that's difficult. Same thing from a four step, we do a lot of these as warm up and tech, to work on technique and then of course the six step straight pole is probably the bread and butter of pole vaulting. You want to learn to, to vault higher, Take six steps out, push the pole to vertical, and get it to turn over and fall over the pit. This is Gibalescu from Italy, Olympic bronze medalist. Pole tip is active, moving through his face, flip and pop, push the pole to vertical. Very difficult to do, but once you learn it, most of the athletes react to me and go, I, I can't believe it was that easy. This is Corey Charpening trying to do a six step. Didn't get his left fist up above his head, the rotation stopped. Loach, Lawrence Johnson, Olympic silver medalist, doing the same drill. This is the first time that I saw it. Once we've done these, we do full swing and vaults from six and eight steps over a crossbar that's about four or five feet back behind the box. You keep it back to make yourself, make yourself elongate and swing. What my athletes have discovered is that the pole starts to bend when they start doing this and get their grips up. If the pole's rotating too fast, raise your grip a fist. Now, this is my project. I don't even know what to say about this, but I had to put it on here because he freaks me out. Oh my God. He's got a long way to go, but he's, he's learning. And then what we do is, as we go to fiberglass, we work on short pole, short run, fiberglass vaulting from six, eight, and 10 steps. So I highly recommend that you guys purchase some 12 foot poles for the girls, 11 foot poles, 13 foot poles for guys, because we can get a lot of work done with short poles and short runs. This is just some of the drills that I threw on here to show you elastic position.
So I had a lot of girls this morning who were trying to keep their left arm straight. Well, that bends the pole, but that will not allow you to swing. So it's important, just as if you were in 1940 and you were, you were straight pole, pole vaulting, you want to go elastic and to drive your body through your shoulders and through your hands. So close grip uh, drills are great. Got to keep your shoulders moving, just like Doug Freda mentioned a little bit earlier. You've got to keep planting into the air. The plant does not stop when you hit the box. You've got to keep extending so that you can keep the pressures and forces facing up and going up so you can swing. Now, you know, what you used to see where you run fast, hold high, and just hope that you make the pit, you know, those times are over, guys. If you want to improve two or four feet in one year, you got to get back to basics and work on the rhythm of the plant, do some slow motion stuff, and then for heaven's sakes, do a lot of straight pole work. And then finally, I want to finish with Sergei Bubka clearing 20 feet. Active pole drop, push the pole, come off the top of the pole. That's not too bad. He, he steel vaulted, holding it 14 feet, believe it or not, from six steps. Straight line to vertical, elastic position, up pressure right off the top of the pole. Now well, that's the way to do it. Here's another angle of it of what I'm talking about. Active pole drop, it's moving with the rhythm of your body. Push the pole up, hit elastically, pressure stays up, or realignment with the pole, as Doug Fraley said, and then just swing to the top. And Buka was quoted as saying that I, I tried to swing immediately off the ground. And that's, that's it. Any questions? Yes, sir. So like uh, Doug Fraley uh, mentioned a minute ago, uh, he talked about realignment. If, if you hit an elastic position off the ground, then immediately, immediately hit in a hollow position like in gymnastics, and all it is is an extension and a pressure up so that you get then what will happen is the pole will really accelerate and you will swing right upside down. So like I showed in the high bar, in the high bar they actually teach you come down elastically and then you just extend even more as your swing is accelerating up. And if you extend even more with the shoulders, your body accelerates. If you pull, like I showed Rachel doing, the body stops. So it's the same thing on, on a pull. If I go fully elastic, and then all I do is realign my body and go pressure and keep the pressures up, and down swing really fast, I will go totally upside down. If you don't believe me, go home and try it. Don't try to row forward. Don't try to lock the arm out. Try to go elastic and hit, keep all the pressures open and up and swing fast. Watch what happens to your inversion. You'll go right upside down, just like a high bar. When I first, he had a question about how you straight pull. Do you slide the hands together or do you just hold your regular grip? We do it both ways. Both ways are effective. In fact, we have a kind of a routine where the kids will take a four step and they start out with their hands totally together right down here. So if you look at the way I carry the pole here. Okay. And then we gradually move it a fist wider, a fist wider, a fist wider until it gets about thighs apart. And then it's a good transition for them to work on feeling that open position like you saw with Warmer Dan. Because we can learn a lot from the old guys from yesteryear, you know. Steel vaulting is the way to go. Straight pull once a week. You can always see, I can, you can come to me, I can watch you take one six step and I can tell you how you fiberglass vault. I can see all the, all the things. Bupka was uh, quoted as saying that uh, straight pulls will hurt you. And they will because they show all your weaknesses and all your problems. Most people don't like to straight pull because they're really difficult to do. But you'll find, your, uh, you find it that you'll improve a lot faster. One of my athletes here on the film, he's a decathlete from California, came to me, a 10-footer, 
two months, he went 14 feet on a 14-foot pole from 10 steps. And all I did is about 20 minutes a day, two days a week of straight pole and worked his way up to fiberglass. One more, one more question, Bob, or are we up? Any more? Okay, thank you. Dave, thank you very much.